Hey guys, this is Jessica and welcome back to my channel, The Retro Farmhouse. Today's project is a project that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, uh, but I just hadn't gotten around to it just yet. And I know it seems kind of weird to have this kind of project in the summertime. This would definitely be a project that would be more appropriate for the winter time, but nonetheless, I wanted to get started on this anyway. And I was inspired by a lot of the vintage type fireplaces that you see in antique shops and different places like that. And uh, I just didn't really want to spend a couple hundred dollars to get a vintage one. Now granted, I love vintage items. That's definitely something that would be worthwhile. But I kind of thought to myself, you know, I bet I could probably DIY this project and make it vintage type, especially with all the different types of paint techniques and things out there that you can make things look um, chippy and have crackle and different things like that. And I wanted to also challenge myself to use a lot of the products that I already had, a lot of the materials that I already had. I'm definitely blessed to be able to have a lot of scrap wood, a lot of trim pieces here and there. I tend to get a lot of stuff from maybe um, neighbors that are throwing things away or they know that I can reuse or sometimes you can even find things off of Facebook Marketplace for cheap or Craigslist. Um, just to name a few. So by the time I ended up doing this project, I think the only one thing I bought cost me like $7 and some change. So ideally, I was able to make this for under $10. Okay, so let's try this again. My camera kind of shut off there. So what I was saying is this project ended up costing me less than $10. Now I know that's not everybody's circumstances, but you could definitely find a lot of the materials for this project. Like I said, on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, um, different things like that. So without further ado, let's get working on today's project. I'm going to start out by making the legs of my fireplace first. So I want to do my two posts. So I'm using one by six inch boards and they're going to be cut to 53 inches tall. So you actually have three side pieces for one post. So now since I didn't have all of the one by six inch boards, I had another board that was one by 10 and I just ripped that in half until I had enough pieces to complete both of my side pieces. Now you'll see here in a few moments that I ended up having to cut a few other pieces to kind of piece this together. But by the time I end up painting it or put some wood filler in there, you're not really going to be able to tell that there's some seams. And even if you did, a lot of these pieces were really old anyway, and it just gives it a little bit more character to the piece. So like I said, as you can see here, I had to end up piecing two of my one by six boards together. And to do that, I just took some scrap two by fours and I was able to either screw or I was able to put some brad nails into this and secure both of these together. Then I took my brad nailer and I just put some nails all the way up through the side on both sides of these. I just love my Ryobi brad nailer. It has a rechargeable battery that you can put on it and it just makes it really, really easy to complete a lot of my wood projects. have this salvage piece of this leftover tabletop so what I wanted to do was use this as the front part of my fireplace. 
the first thing I wanted to do is just use some of my citrus strip. I use this a lot. I really like this. It's not as toxic. You can actually use it indoors if you wanted just to kind of get that top layer off so that way I can sand it and my paint will stick better to it. And I just used a 220 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth this over a little bit and get a little bit of a grip for the paint. Next, I'm gonna use the other part of this salvage tabletop. And I really liked how the edge is like beveled here and it comes out and it would make a really nice top. So the only issue with this is that this top was not long enough. So I had to cut my first piece to the exact width that I wanted. And then I needed to cut this in half and add another little section piece in the middle. And later on, I'm gonna end up putting some Bondo over top of this so you won't really be able to tell that there's a seam there. But this was just the best way that I, that I was able to put a nice top on. And I really liked the beveled edge again that gave it some character. You don't necessarily have to do anything like this. You could just get a one by 10 and rip it down to maybe like whatever width you want, want it to be. It could be eight inches or maybe at 10 inches. And you could even, if you wanted to, cut the edge pieces at an angle and have these type of angles if you if you like this type of style. To apply these together, I just took some more two by fours and I screwed some screws down through this to connect all of my pieces together. And just for some extra security, I went ahead and stuck a few brad nails down through the top. Next, I did the same process and just sanded the top of this smooth. That way my edges were a little bit more smooth and I was able to get that top glossy finish off. Next, I squared up the front piece as best as I could and I just attached that with my brad nailer and then I attached the top the same way. I have a bunch of trim pieces that were left over from the previous owners up in the barn loft that used to live here. And so I'm taking these and I'm adding a little bit of decorative element to the bottom of my legs. I'm not an expert at doing the 45 degree angle, so I definitely recommend to maybe Google that. But the good thing about this is that you can use caulking in any of the cracks if it doesn't meet exactly. And this is the only piece that I ended up buying. It cost me about $7 and some change from the local Lowe's store. And I wanted to put that in the middle here. So I'm just measuring my middle center point. And then I'm gonna take some Gorilla Wood Glue and I'm gonna attach that on. And I did end up placing some weighted materials over top of this and I left it overnight to dry.
If you've watched any of my previous videos on how I use my scroll saw, I'll put a link up to one here. It'll show you how I made this. I didn't kind of go through the whole process, but I wanted a decorative scroll type piece to come down on my front piece. So I just kind of traced a pattern here and now I am sanding that out with my little mouse sander to make all the edges smooth. I ended up attaching this with just some wood glue and some more brad nails. Next, I'm just taking some dark chocolate type chalk paint that I have, and I'm just applying this all over my fireplace here. I wanted this to have a dark kind of underlayment paint for when I do the distressing or chipping later. Next, I'm just gonna take some Bondo and I'm applying that on the cracks to the top here so that way it looks more like one smooth piece. Now, I will be honest, this is the first time I've ever used Bondo. This stuff smells really bad. I would recommend using it outside. This is not something you wanna use inside. It says to use gloves and just apply it like you're spreading like peanut butter or something on an edge here. It does dry really, really fast. So you wanna be able to use it within the first minute or two and apply it on pretty well. And I put it on at a more thicker layer and just sanded it off to make more of a flat surface. Next, I'm using this method here where you can actually take a candle and rub it on certain areas that maybe you don't want your paint to stick to as well. Sometimes this will help when you're either sanding or maybe chipping away some of the paint. Then I'm going back, I have this leftover milk paint from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and I believe it's in the color Ocean. You've seen me use this before in other projects, but I had a little bit left over. And I'm just applying this in different areas that maybe I want chipped back to have a little bit of green look. That way it looks more like it has a lot of layers of paint on it and it looks old. One thing about milk paint is you can add some heat to some of those thicker areas and you'll get a little bit of cracking and distressing. I noticed the areas that I put more globs of paint on and then just held my hair dryer over, it created that crackle look that I was going for. For my main color, I ended up lucking out when I was at Home Depot picking up a few things and I found this quart can size that was the, in the non-refundable section for like $2.50. And this is in the Sherman Williams Choice Cream color. It's kind of like a warm type cream or like maybe a peachy type cream depending on the lighting that you see. But I want, knew I wanted to paint this in a cream type color and I always like to go by those sections or the clearance sections of what I call the oops paints and they have a lot of really nice stuff marked down so I was able to score this again for $2.50. That was something else I bought. I completely forgot about adding into this but I'm just putting a couple layers of this over before I end up doing my distressing. Now normally to distress, I sometimes take a piece of sandpaper and I will sand the edges, but I wanted more of the old chippy type look. So I am taking a scraper here and just kind of scraping my edges and scraping parts of the sections. Now, as you can see here, there's a few sections that came off in big clumps and I didn't really want that look, but the fun thing about this is you can kind of play with it and you can layer the paint on. If you take off too much, you can go back and put some more on and then chip off a little bit later. But a lot of places where I did the milk paint, it definitely came up 
more and I really liked how it showed that contrast between two of the colors. Lastly, to seal my piece, I just took some DIY clear wax and just applied that all over with my wax brush. I let that dry for a little while, at least I think probably 15 to 30 minutes, whatever it says on the can, and then I buffed that smooth. And here's how today's project turned out. I am absolutely in love with this fireplace. I have been wanting to add something to this room for a long time. We actually have a section of our house where we have two living rooms technically and this is the original living room of the house and i just always wanted to put a faux farmhouse type fireplace in there i use this little space heater during the winter time in this area and i just thought it would be really neat to diy one for myself I love the chippy look. I think it gives a great vintage vibe to this piece. I know the chippy look isn't necessarily for everybody, but you could definitely make this and just not distress it, not do the chippy look or anything like this. It was so easy to make. And again, if you use reclaimed materials, it won't cost you very much at all. love how today's project turned out if you guys like it as well don't forget to hit that like button as well subscribe and consider sharing the video as well that really helps my channel out and I just want to thank you guys again so much for your support I love chatting with you in the comment section and don't forget to stay tuned to our next DIY we'll see you guys again next time